Hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to connect a Swift UI application with Firebase and fetch data from Cloud Firestore. So Firestore is a document-based NoSQL database that allows you to synchronize data in real time. This is especially useful for applications that allow users to share data with other users or with their other devices. And the best thing about it is all of this comes for free right out of the box without any implementation effort on your end. So let's dive right in and I'm going to show you how to implement this. So here I've got a simple application that I've prepared which displays a list of books as we can see in the preview pane over here. I have defined a static array to hold our books and down here in my books list view you can see that I'm using a list view to iterate over the array of books and then display the, their details in the number of text views. If we take a look at our data model, we can see that I've got a number of attributes here, such as title, author, and number of pages for my book. And I have also made it identifiable so that we can use it in our list view. I've also gone ahead and connected the project to Firebase, as you can see by the presence of the Google service.plist file here, and also the pod file contains um, the pods that we need. If you are new to setting up projects for Firebase, I encourage you to head over to the documentation, which goes into great detail and explains how to do that. And there is even a short video that walks you through it. While we're here in the browser, let's quickly look at the Firebase project I created. And in the project, I also instantiated Cloud Firestore and prepared um, a, a couple of sample documents for us. So Firestore stores data in documents, and you can see I have created two documents here which represent two books. So for example, I've got the Pragmatic Programmer and another book is Changer by Matt Gamal. The documents are organized in a collection which is named Books, and what we want to do next is subscribe to this collection in our application and make sure that we get any updates so that we can display any updates that are made to the data in our um, view. So let me go back to my application. And probably the easiest way and the cleanest way to implement uh, this is to, to build a view model. So we already have the model, we have a view. So the view model basically sits in the middle and translates between the model and the view. So let's go ahead and create a new file here. Uh, it's a new Swift file and let's call it books view model. And then I'm going to create a new class here, name it books view model. And the main responsibility of the class is to hold a collection of books. So let's define a variable to hold our books and instantiate an empty array. Next, I want to write a function that connects to Firestore and subscribes to any changes that happen on our books collection. So the first thing to do is import Firestore and then get a handle to our default Firestore instance private var db equals firestore.firestore. And then we can go ahead and write a function fetch data, which we can use to subscribe our, to our data. So let's first get our, um, get our collection um, and and read the documents from our collection. So let's do that. So db.collection books at snapshot listener. 
Um, and the snapshot listener has two parameters, query snapshot and error. And the query snapshot holds the documents from our collection. So let me implement a guard here. To make sure that we get a collection of documents because it might be nil and if there are no documents we will just print a message and then return so at this point we know we have documents and then we can go in and transform those documents into book models and a good way to do that is to use the map operation. So documents dot map, and then we can do a transform and we get a query document snapshot. And here is a book that we want to return. So now we want to go into each of the document snapshots and read the information that is in the document snapshot. So each document snapshot represents one document. So query document snapshot, and then we'll get the data property. And you can see that it is a dictionary which maps from string to any. And the string part of this basically are the attribute names that we define on our document in Firestore and the any's are the values. So let's get this and store it in a variable and then read the various parts into local variables as well. So author equals data, author let pages equals data pages. And then we can instantiate a book instance and use the attributes that we just fetched to initialize it. And then we can return the book from our closure. And you will notice that this is a problem here. So Swift co complains that um, the title here needs to be a string, but what we give it is an any optional. And you know that is because the data contains a dictionary which maps from string to any, as I showed you before. So what we want to do is we want to type costs the any into the correct data type. So let's cast them to a string. And if there is a nil value, we will return a default value like this. And then for the number of pages, we're going to cast to int. And if there is no value, we will return zero. So this should be fine now. And let me simplify this like that. And then, of course, we need to assign the result of our map operation to the books array up here. Self.books equals documents.map. Nice. So almost done. There are two things that we need to do before we can use our books view model in a Swift UI. And the first thing is we need to make sure that we implement from observable object and mark up any attributes that we want to connect to our UI using the add published property wrapper. So that's that. Now we can go back to our book list view and actually start using our new view model. So let me create a new local variable here. and instantiate our books view model like this. And of course, we need to make sure that Swift knows that this is an observed object. So it knows that 
um, SwiftUI needs to manage the state handling. Oops, observe object. There we go. Okay, and then we can use this down here in our list view. And because we've got a property called books on our view model, this works transparently. So that's that. Um, we can now get rid of our static array. And we finally need to make sure that our fetch data method is called. A good way to do that is here in the on appear callback. And what we want to do is call self view model dot fetch data. All right. So let me start the application in the simulator um, and bring up both the simulator and Firestore right here. And you will notice that instead of showing the three books that we define in our static array, it will now only display the two books that it fetches from our books collection here. And we can make a change. So for example, let me change the number of pages for this book from 521 to 576. And once I hit update, you will notice that the UI will update immediately like this. And we can also add a new document. So I've got um, this book here by Matt Gamel, really recommend it. Um, so let's add this book. I will let Fire, Firestore manage creating a new ID for me. And then I'll just need to specify the fields for our book. So the title is tall. The author is at Gamel. And the number of pages. Let me quickly take a look. It's um, 460 and it's a number. Once I hit save, the new book will appear in the simulator like this. And I want to show you one final thing. So what happens if I delete a book? So let's delete the pragmatic programmer. We can do that using the overflow menu here, delete document. And once I confirm, you will see that the book disappears from our um, UI. Great. So that's basically how you connect to Firestore and fetch data. Um, very straightforward. There is one thing that we need to take care of um, that is where there's some room for improvement. So if we take a look at the way how we map our data from the documents to our book instances, that seems to be a lot of code. And also, it doesn't seem to be very safe. Um, so I'd like to optimize this. But this is something that we're going to look into the next time. So thanks for watching. And I will see you next time.